Hey, I'm Sam McBride from Deep Purple, and I'm here to uh, show you through my rig today. Um, let's start with the guitar. So first of all, it's a, it's a PRS. It's a signature series. It's, uh, it was made for me by Paul uh, several years ago now. Um, it's basically what they call a 408. It has the, the 408 pickups and the, the pickup configuration and stuff. Um, I'm running it all through a couple of angle uh, artist edition heads, which are kind of modified and tweaked for me. Um, we have these very small cabinets here. <laughs> you know, we, uh, it's a stereo system. I run everything in stereo, so I have the delays, which are in ping pong and stuff like that. Um, speakers are Celestian Vintage 30s in all of them. So uh, the middle one is just for decoration. <laughs> That's all it is. So. Uh, it's just when I stand here, it gives me that little bit of separation when the ping pong delays, and especially the chorus, I can hear it that, that stereo mode. So, um, but I'll run you through some of the signs and let, let you hear. So uh, this is just the amp. You know, uh, I have a little bit of reverb on from the, uh, the, the TC, but in this massive place, it's probably hard to hear. <laughs> so let's hear it. You know? <laughs> That's just the amp, that's just dry. Then I have a bunch of effects here, so let's start from away over here. So this is a chorus pedal, it's a, it's a jam pedals chorus, and it's like. That's pretty cool. Uh, I use that on various songs like Perfect Strangers and things like that. Um, what else do we have? We have the new pedals by PRS Guitars. Um, this next one is called Horse Meat, and it's basically just a, an overdrive pedal. Uh, I use it on certain solos in the, in the set. And, you know, it sounds like this. <laughs> So you can hear it's a bit of a lead boost, you know. I, I have a various pedals which I use for lead boost and stuff, so that's just one of them. Um, the next one is a, another PRS pedal. It's a compressor pedal, and uh, but I like it. I don't use the compression on it. I use it just as a straight boost pedal. And, um, you know, so uh, it, it, and sometimes when I play my other guitar, which is a, a Fiore, which is a little bit brighter, when I kick in for a solo and say of Highway Star, you know, uh, I kick on the compressor because it just smooths the top end just a tiny little bit, but um, it sounds like this, you know, this is the dry signal. <laughs> All right, next pedal is a uh, flanger pedal by PRS. Um, it's a flanger. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. Let's hear it, you know, so. All right, I have another boost, which is a pedal by Source Audio, and it's called the Zeo Boost. It's just a line boost, and uh, sounds like this. <laughs> then I have a Univibe by Jam Pedals. It's uh, for all that Hendrixy stuff. You know, you got that.
Then I have this crazy pedal by a guy called Val Brook. It's a, a German pedal and it's an Octavia, but it's the most wild Octavia I've ever had. So, and it's uh, like this. Uh, what else I got? Um, oh, I forgot about these two at the start. Um, first in the chain is these two digi Digitech pedals. I use it for certain sections of a song where, you know, sometimes we, we, we detune certain songs. Um, so I just, it's basically the drop pedal, which is like. <laughs> Then uh, I have the ricochet pedal, which I use quite a lot for um, the start of Highway Star. You know, we did, I kind of do the whole screamy thing that Gillen used to do, so um, which does this. It's going to get noisy. So it's like a. <laughs> Madness. <laughs> and then. Uh, Oh, I have an old MXR Phase 90, um, which I run actually in the effects loops of the amp because it actually, when you put a, a Phase 90 in front of the amp, it can, you know, it affects the preamp sound, but, and it's a little bit more subtle than putting it in the effects loop. When you put it in the effects loop, it just takes over the whole sound, which is cool, you know. <laughs> Um, what else I got? Oh, just an old octave pedal, which I use sometimes, you know. Uh. <laughs> then I have a Boss Space Echo, which I use for, for yeah, one song, I think. It's a bit overkill for <laughs> what I need, but who cares, you know, it's a... So it's quite cool. Then lastly, but certainly no means least, I, you know, the, the, the plethora, which I, I love this thing, it's brilliant because you can have all, you know, the classic TC effects in there and, uh, you know, it's so easy to use, which, you know, for somebody like me, who's not very technically minded, uh, makes my life a lot easier. And, um, but yeah, th this is kind of used for, uh, well, the reverb's always on. So it's always on through the gig. Um, I use delay for uh, quite a lot of guitar solos and stuff. Uh, at the minute, I just have a simple setup where it's the reverb, uh, then the second pedal is the chorus, which is like a tri stereo chorus. Because I grew up in the 80s, so I love all that kind of 80s chorus, you know, Michael Landau, Steve Lugather kind of thing. So all that with delays and stuff is kind of cool. So a lot of time I'd use delay, I use ping pong delay. Again, I like the 80s. So let's hear that, you know. So we got. Um, So that's kind of a lot of time I would use that for lead sound. Then the chorus is a it's kind of like a it's like a tri stereo chorus kind of a thing.
there you go. That's my rigged rundown and uh, pedals and guitars. And cheers. Awesome. Are you using other guitars? Uh, yes, one other guitar, which he's don't know what he's doing with it. He's restringing it. Is that restrung? Is that ready to go or? Undone. undone. Okay, that's useless. That one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, I use a, uh, it's a PRS Fiore. It's um, it's kind of uh, cool for some of those uh, older signs like that Richie used to get. It's still a humbucker in it, but it's quite bright a little bit, you know, and gives you that very open, transparent kind of thing. So, um, but yeah, I only bring two guitars with me. That's all I need. Oh, strings. Uh, I use the Adarios. I use the Adarios, just the standard ones. I think they're EXLs, 10 to 46. Um, yeah, they. I've used the Adario strings since I was this height. So uh, I'm kind of used to them. I'm used to the feel of them. You know, I've tried uh, other manufacturers of strings, but I always go back to the Adario. So um, I don't know. It's something about the feel. It's something, about, I don't know. Plus, I don't break them as much, you know. Others, I remember but I got a, a set of strings. I can't remember the manufacturer, but I broke all six of them in one gig. That was like, ooh, I'll not be using those again. But anyway. But yeah, Deodario strings. I use Deodario cables. Uh, they're great. You know, they, we're running 30 feet cables from uh, the back of the board into the effects loop. Um, as I said, everything's split in stereo. So everything comes into the board, and then... Uh, We've, we send out of the amp, which goes into the phase 90, out of the phase 90 into the plethora. Um, out of that, which is where the signal gets split then, it goes into stereo and then into the, the space echo and uh, goes into the return of the main amp and then into the return of the, the second amp and stuff. So, um, But yeah, I use a wireless system. I use a, a sure one. Don't ask me what the model number is, I have no idea. It's only new, it's that one. <laughs> But it's pretty cool. We've been using it now for the last, uh, since the start of this, this tour. So, and because uh, I always use cables before and I was never really a wireless guy, but I tried it and was like, I don't really notice any difference. So that's cool. Um, what else have I got? Oh, I use the gig rig stuff. Uh, it's a little, uh, it's kind of a switching thing. All the pedals go into there. Yeah, Daniel Steinhardt's thing. Yeah, it's, um, it's very cool, you know, it means, you know, the guitar goes in there and straight out of it and it's not running through all the pedals at once because mm. you just lose, you know, even even though with modern technology and with the way pedals have lots of buffers in them and stuff, but if one goes down, it's like, I've got a safety net, you know what I mean? So um, the only thing I run before this is just the two Digitag pedals because I find they work best just going straight into them from the guitar and not going through any other circuitry, so um, that's how you get the, the cleanest sound. But it's all powered by the gig rig. It's you don't want to look underneath; it's a mess. <laughs> it's all little boxes and stuff. So, uh, but yeah. What's the best part about playing with a deep purple? Uh, what's the best part? Um, how about I, well, all of it really. It's because it's you know it's deep purple, and you know you you get up every night and you play all those classic iconic songs and it's like you know and the guys are, are, are amazing to play with they're great players you know still and uh so yeah no i just i'm loving every moment of it you know so it's it's all of it is great you know i get to play you know terrible places like this you know it's <laughs> i'm joking so uh but yeah no it's all cool do you have a favorite song on the set list Somebody else asked me this, and I said no. I, I just I love playing them all. I honestly do. I'm not lying. I do love playing them all. Every 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 night, it's like, what's next on the set? Oh yes, this one. You know. So, um, but yeah, no, I love them all. They're all great songs. You know, it's hard to pick a bad one. <laughs> How was it playing uh, "Smoke on the Water" with Deep Purple for the first time in front of an audience? Well, that was that was an experience. I remember it. It was my first gig I did with him in May, and uh, we were in Israel, and. Um, it was a funny experience because I, you know, I had uh, I hadn't done a gig really in two years because of COVID. You know, everybody's sitting in their ass at home doing nothing. And my first gig back was playing in front of ten thousand people with Deep Purple, and I was like, "Oh crap! Oh no!" <laughs> and then I had to go play "Smoke in the Water," so I was a little bit nervous. I don't normally get nervous for gigs, but uh, that was that was an experience. It's. Uh, you know, when you play, like I played it with, you know, Ian Gillen before, and I played it with Don Airy before, but once you 
first time with these guys, all of them together, it's like, I have to pinch myself sometimes. It's like, am I actually here? <laughs> you know, so, but it, no, it's an amazing, amazing experience. Thanks for showing us around. Uh, do we need to see anything on the amp or did we cover that? Uh, I can show you what the, 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 uh, um, the settings. Yeah. Well, basically, this, this amp is uh, it's an artist edition. It's kind of modified for me. Um, we're still tweaking with it, you know. Uh, uh, the guys at Angle are great, you know, to work with. Um, so this one, there's two of them. There's this one, and you know, but this is the unmodified one. So it's a little bit more less mid and, and, and more top. Where this one, I like a bit more the the, the higher mids and stuff uh, put into it, and just a little bit less uh, uh, that that sparkly presence thing on the amps because it's it's a hard thing when you play with uh, you know a Hammond player because they're on very similar frequencies so it's trying to get that balance right so the Hammond is more kind of probably like that amp you know the bottom one but the modified one is just sitting a little bit above the frequency range in his so it works really well so um, no it's great amp we're still as I said we're still tweaking it and, and trying to get it you know exactly for me what what I want and stuff so but you know, so far so good. It's all it's all really good. So and then the cabinets, you know, they're 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 still actually Steve's cabinets. You know, from mm. well, Angle, they're Angle's cabinets. So um, they still work. They're all good. You know, they're just it's just vintage thirties in them, Celestians. So and they all sound great. So yeah, and that's it. I don't know who made the rack case. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs>